After the end is a mod that I've wanted to play for a very long time. In this video, I finally try and pick it up. In what other group to play as than the Amish? Let's get into this. I chose this Amish guy over everybody else. Just based on the fact that he's like the biggest Amish guy on the map. And I'm honestly not even sure if there is another Amish uh, guy on the map at all. Well, yeah, there's one. Whatever. I am not playing as that guy. I'm playing as this guy here. So looking at our position, we are definitely not in the best position, succession-wise. Our wife is 49 years old and has no kids, so you already know what that means. She has to go. I can't divorce her either because of my faith. And I might as well also say this now, I haven't played this mod at all before, so I don't know what could happen. There could be special events where like a guy pops up over here and just destroys me instantly. I have no idea. I'm really hoping not because I really want to play tall and just create like an Amish North Korean nation. You know what I mean? I also think that we're in a decent spot to actually do this. Our faith here honestly kind of sucks. Well, actually it really sucks. We, we have communal identity, pacifism, and pastoral isolationism. None of these tenets are good by any means, but our culture is decent enough to play tall with. We have agrarian, which gives us all these nice playing tall buffs over here. We're also passive, which gives us dev growth. And everything else over here is not too good for playing tall. I'm going to immediately put a guy on increasing dev over here. And let's consolidate my little kingdom. We're missing one county, which is from him. He's a pushover, so I'm really not worried about this at all. So there's actual events in this mod. This is pretty cool. So which one am I going to do? I guess I could do this and just cheat on her. I guess I could do that. Or I could kill her, which I'm trying to do. It has a decently high success rate. But if I fail, though, I'm screwed. I think I'm just going to do this one and just cheat on her. I know that's horrible, but I can't really do anything else here. So, yeah. This is a lot less risky than uh, having like a 50-50 chance to fail a murder scheme and then just dying. So, yeah. This one's good. Here we go. I don't know if that's going to be our only conquest the entire game. Probably not. But it's probably going to be the only one for a little bit. Luckily enough for us, the guy already had these built for us. So this is a pretty decent playing tall building. I'm going to add on to this one by probably doing just the average farm and fields. And then trade port. And just devving this land up to an insane amount. Which one should I start with? Uh, Actually trade port while this stuff builds i might as well also talk about the amish people because i do know the majority of my audience is european and i do know there are some amish people in europe but it's not nearly as much as in um as in america well that's great isn't that great anyways <laughs> so um the amish people live in like the 1800s you know they drive like horse and buggy still they uh they don't use lights unless it's for a business. They don't use new tools. They're basically kind of capped in in the 1800s, which I'm really thinking would be a pretty nice skill set in the case of a nuclear just wasteland, you know? Nothing would really change for them. And I've actually talked to Amish people in real life. Not for long. I've just like gone to like shops and stuff. And they are pretty um I would say harsh people <laughs> they don't really like to conversate very much but yeah i just figured i'd give a brief overview of what amish people actually are and uh, what they do or their uh their belief system i mean after that kind of unfortunateness that happened with my previous wife i married the courtier which i was sleeping with and we have a kid so succession is safe i'm just gonna build a blancaster here it's basically the only really good terrain that we have in our entire kingdom. It's like 95% hills and mountains. So it's pretty terrible. But I guess we'll do. This is pretty cool. Apparently there's Seeks in this mod too. I have so many starts I could play as. Before I started recording. I wrote down like 6 different things I wanted to play as. So if you guys want me to continue playing this mod. Just tell me. Of course after watching the video. Because I don't know how good this will go. And this could turn out absolutely horrible. But if you like this one just let me know. And I'll record a few more of these for you guys. 
That kind of sucks. I wasn't expecting him to do this so soon. I did kind of look at him and eye him up. And he does look pretty strong in his dev over here. We should be able to fend him off though. We have more pikemen than him. And that's all that really matters in all these hills. So it should be easy enough. Never mind, I lied. He murked up. Uh, I, I probably can't even get any allies, can I? Actually, I can. I can get somebody from Chicago. Sure. Come on in and help me, Chicago guy. Easy enough. It's done with. Please. Please be successful. Thank you. I need to last until I get at least 500 prestige so I can change my succession law to make it primogeniture because for some reason it's confederate partition which I obviously don't want at all. All I need is 20 prestige. Please don't die. Please don't die. Thank you Duke Daniel. You saved me. And he doesn't even know either. Why can't I, uh, why can't I do it? Is it because of, like I didn't take these ones before it? Do I even have the one unlocked? It's that one there, so that was kind of a non-issue. There's just no way I could have got primogeniture anyways. So that means that one of my kids is going to have to be disinherited. He's going into stewardship, so this son has to go. I was kind of wondering where my main duchy, like, uh, county was. And for some reason, my vassal holds on to it. I can take it from him. I lose 16 opinion, but I don't really have that many vassals anyways to care about. It's not going to affect me at all. I don't see why I wouldn't do this. Thank you, Duke Eli of Coland, for my main province back. And there we go. So, maybe the way to do this is forcing my neighbors to respect me by just making a massive army. Because I really don't have to face him, 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 <laughs> you know, every single, like, you know, five years. It's just not feasible for me to actually survive in those conditions. I can actually ally him, so obviously I'm going to do that one. And I'm in debt too, man. That sucks. Okay. This should be easily winnable, though. I'm not too worried. Okay. So this isn't winnable, apparently. Because the ally appears in, like, three wars. And I went into this like an idiot and just killed myself. So, so I'm obviously going to have to restart this. Or not restart this, but just go back to save state. And eventually win somehow holy crap so i went back in time and he must have like a huge event chain where he just goes crazy because he's expanding quite a bit and i'm pretty terrified of this because there's no way i can really defend against this i'm making sure this time to save up for mercs too just in case and i'm definitely not going into debt either i can definitely see that i'm in danger i'm also trying to kill their ruler it's not working out too well i doubt it's gonna work i've been pondering thinking perhaps and i found my solution sacrifice one of my sons to him and hope that he eventually doesn't try to kill me i rarely ever do this so i don't know when he dies it'll stay that way i hope so because he's very obviously on death's bed i think karma got him pretty good for killing his wife here he's a leper infirm and melancholic so he is not having a great time on this earth right now here you go president a merrick Here's my son. Please don't kill me. King Abram the seventh is dead from being a leper, among many, many other things. And now we're King Paul, who's already turning out pretty good. He already has a virtuous trait, and he's in stewardship, so playing Totham is going to be super easy. And our pact is still secure, so the presidency won't massacre me. I've made up my mind. The only places I'm going to be able to expand this entire game is every kingdom who borders me right now. That's the only places I can expand. And I'm not going to take that as I'm allowed to take all these guys out. I'm only allowed to take these guys out until I'm at least a little bit safe. I'm reasonably safe now. The presidency kind of fell apart and it's not nearly as impressive as it once was. And I'm going to take out this lady here and hopefully get Philadelphia. No, I won't get it. I'll just get her as a vassal. All right, it's over with. I captured her, and there we go. And now she's unfortunately my vassal, which I'm going to have to at one point get rid of. We now have access to construct a grand cathedral. I hold on to two holy sites. One is my current capital, and one's the capital of my duchy. Let's put one in my current capital. You know what? 
I'm actually gonna hold off. I'd much rather do the thousand gold one and get a super good cathedral than just doing a 250 one and getting a garbage one. So let's reconsider. And I'll just do it down the line. I didn't realize that she was maimed. And I also kind of pushed her along the grave by giving her a not feeling well trait. Thank you for your land. Philadelphia is pretty well developed. This is pretty cool over here. The West Indies are completely united, and it's only been 22 years. That's pretty impressive. Let's do this now. Alright, our cathedral's built. I was really worried that I'd only get that 500 prestige and piety, but thankfully, I actually got a holy site, which is definitely an amazing building to have. Here's the progress for the development in our capital. I think we started off at like 4 developments, so we're doing pretty good right now. We are growing slower now that like we've dev so much. So I might eventually start focusing on our little counties over here. Yeah, that is probably what I'm going to end up doing here. Is focusing on my main one. And when I can't focus on it anymore, I'll just go to my little ones, build up their stuff, dev them up. Speaker Chad has got to go. And I'd love for somebody to tell me why he's like four foot nine and he's not classified as a dwarf. Let's do this. You already know I gotta get the staple in basically every single playing tall playthrough. These royal reserves give us plus 10 dev growth. No other building really does that. This one could help holding taxes, but I'm pretty good on money right now, you know? I'm not too worried about money at all, so royal reserves it is. I can't believe I'm about to say this on my channel, but let's put a holy order in the town where the headquarters of Hershey's is. I can't believe that's a sentence I just said. <laughs> there we go. Let's take out New York. And we'll take out Manhattan. And what's this place called? Westchester? Okay. The Statue of Liberty is ours. This is a huge pickup for us, by the way. Here's another cathedral. I'm going to add it to my culture. And I'm going to add cheesemongers. Reason A is that it's kind of a LARP. I don't remember the last time I went to an Amish store, but I remember they make their own cheese. So there's a LARP. And reason number two is that it's one of the most cheapest and just OP cultural traditions that I can see. Strong is more common. Gluttonous is more common. That kind of sucks. But gluttonous is kind of offset by both strong and this health boost. And characters can also make cheese. I don't know what that entails. I'm interested. So let's add it. King Paul is dead due to tuberculosis. Our son is basically his exact replacement, so nothing changes. And another cathedral. Nice. Here's another update on our lands. We're looking pretty yellow now, but I do need to focus on dewing my vassals land a little bit too. They're really falling far behind. This is pretty terrifying. <laughs> so the Black Death is ravaging across the entirety of all the Americas. I'm going to immediately isolate my capital. I really didn't even see this happening. It just came out of nowhere. How fast is this expanding? It doesn't look too quickly. It actually looks like it's going away. At least on the east coast here. Hopefully it'll just go away and won't expand to my realm. I just about had a heart attack. I thought this was a black death. It isn't. It's just some other minor little incursion. We're not going to get the black death. It's not expanding at all up north. Another Paul is dead. All of our stuff is built out to the max. And look at these bonuses I'm getting. I'm getting plus seven a month from this. I, oh my goodness. Can I? There we go. I finally got it. I'm getting all of these insane bonuses. And it's just going great. And now that I can't pull up anything else, I'm going to go in my city and temple holdings and build up these, for example, because I'm pretty sure they do count towards the overall county. It's definitely worth doing. And our capital right now is at 32 development, which compared to everybody else is pretty decent, especially in our little area here. The American Pope called for a crusade for Chicago. He is done for. There's no chance that he's going to win this. And this guy popped out too. And I really want to play this faith eventually. It's, it's looking pretty interesting. This is super unlucky. I got cancer at 31 years old. That is so unlucky. There he goes. He was only 35 and he's gone. Alright. I think I'm actually just going to end it here. 
The reason why I'm going to end it is just based on the fact that I've kind of ran out of things to really do. I'm really trying not to expand, so I can't do that. But after I get it, I'll just be sitting here for another four hours, just dabbing in silence. So I think I'm going to end it. Looking at our nation, we make decent money. At one point, we made over 100 ducats. But since my guy's not in stewardship, and we're also over our domain limit, that's being affected quite a bit. And increasing development is slowing down too, just based on the fact that I don't have all these innovations. You know, I'm about to get this one here. My highest dev land is Landcaster with almost 40 dev. Actually, my highest one is Manhattan still. This is a super good province to have if you're playing with this mod. It is amazing. Looking at the dev map, it looks like we do have higher dev than really important cities like Cleveland, Chicago. Apparently, Gary, Illinois has a ton of dev too. And it looks like we're the bastion of dev on the East Coast and on the West Coast. Basically, the entire US, we have the highest dev provinces. Looking at the rest of the world, the Holy Colombian Commonwealth was doing super, super terribly, but they've come back and they're super strong in troop count. The Greater Reserve is doing okay. Michigan is owned by Mormons. Wisconsin is there. Iowa's massive. So is Utah and California too. They're huge. Nobody stands out of Mexico. Him maybe. She has a ton of troops. Nobody stands out too much here besides this person. Brazil fell apart. And so that one West Indies nation over here, they're completely collapsed. Looking at religions, we just consolidated our faith over here and our entire realm follows it. Galvanist is huge. Evangelical is doing pretty good too. The Mormons are big. And I can't really go into extreme detail about anything else. Just based on I don't know what's rare in this mod and what isn't. Brazil is an absolute mess though in religions. Holy crap, that is disgusting. Just let me know if you like this video and you want to see this mod again. And thank you for watching.